Hello, I am Sergei and this is the Mesh to HRDF version 1 tutorial. In this video we will configure and export Mesh to HRDF simulation project out of Blender. As usual, written tutorial can be more up to date and contains additional details that could not be included in the video. So let's start with an overview of the tutorial. This tutorial follows the 3D Mesh optimization tutorial steps, so it assumes you have two meshes, one for the left ear and one for the right ear. Mesh to HRTF can simulate also other projects and other scenarios, not only HRTFs. But this tutorial is only the basic HRTF simulation, so everything is straight to the point. There are actually two alternative workflows or two ways how to define a simulation project. One uses vibrating element source and another one uses point source. They are almost identical in practice, but uh, we will use vibrating element source for this tutorial. Here you can see the instructions for the vibrating element method, and right after that is the part about point source method. This is quite simple as well, but uh, not covered in this tutorial, because it basically does the same thing as vibrating element method. Finally, we will be exporting the project. And here is a fast method, which looks scary, but actually is easier than the regular method, which uses the typical GUI for exporting files out of Blender. And the rest of the tutorial is project export settings. First of all, it lists the defaults which are proposed for this tutorial. And these default settings are perfectly fine for most users. Here's some section to read for deeper understanding. And then we come to the evaluation grids. Evaluation grids are quite interesting. I will actually show you. Here is in the mesh to HRTF folder, mesh to HRTF, mesh to input, evaluation grids. These are the provided default evaluation grids which come together with the project at this point. If you open the, for example, RE1, you can see the PDF file, which contains the visual representation of the points for which the simulation will output results. In this case, you can see that it's a 1.2 meter radius half sphere, and there will be 1,550 points in the results. There is a way to actually create your own simulation grids. It can be done in Blender, it can be done through Python and in MATLAB. This tutorial will not cover how to do it, but you are welcome to read up on it and experiment with your own. It's also possible to simulate multiple evaluation grids in one simulation. In fact, we will do two simulation grids in the default configuration. So in general, the recommended evaluation grids may change over time but the default ones provided today are a good start. Finally, there is a more tips section and also some details about picture rendering, which is a little bit complicated, so I do not recommend to actually use it unless you really want to. So let's dive into Blender where we left off and start preparing our project. Remember, we started from the example file, so we have some advantages. But either way, you select the mesh you want to work with, and then you go to the Materials tab. Here you have a plus button, which you should press three times to create three slots for materials. And then you select the first slot, and under the drop down, I already have three materials created because I started from the example file. The first material must be skin material. In case you do not have it created already, you can always create new material by just typing word skin here. Then you select the second one and you choose either left or right ear. And for a third one, you need to select the last material. Even though we will not use all three materials on this specific mesh, you do have to have three slots for vibrating element approach. Because we selected first slot as skin, the whole mesh already has the skin material applied. Now we need to go into edit mode. Make sure you are in the face select mode, which is shortcut free on the keyboard. Zoom in on your ear and pick 
the triangle which represents which best represents the place for a microphone now you select the material you want to apply this is going to be the right ear and you press assign button now this triangle has changed the material to the right ear that's it for this mesh we go tab to exit we switch to the other one this one is still default so we click plus 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 select the first material skin second material one of the ears and the third one one of the ears so we will have to apply the left ear we click in the 3d view tab to go into edit mode we are already in the face select mode we pick a triangle which looks most appropriate for an ear canal entrance placed microphone select left ear assign done So let's go back to the tutorial and see what is our next step. I will show you first the fast method. Hi, we are making a bit of a detour here because the original recording ran into a bug and became a bit more complicated than it should have been. So now I'm going to show you what the express method looks like or the fast method. All you need to do is you copy the script which is given here, Control C. You should open up Notepad or any other editor because it allows you to edit some of the paths here. But in case you are following exactly this tutorial, you actually don't need to change anything at all. All the paths here are corresponding to the locations I've been using in this tutorial and uh, your project names will be these so you can keep the default as well so i just select the whole thing ctrl c go back to blender here i have my meshes it doesn't matter if they are hidden or unhidden go to scripting where i have the python console and paste it takes a bit of a time before you see that pasting has worked and you, you hit enter two times. Enter, enter. And that's it. The whole exporting is done. If you go back to your HRTF tools folder, now you have two projects created. Here is the left side, here is the right side. And you're done. Now we'll go back to the original recording where you will see how to deal with some issues as well as regular export option. I will show you first the fast method and the fast method starts by copy all this code so I select everything press ctrl C and now I'm going to open notepad the reason I need notepad is because I need to make some changes to this specifically you need to modify the paths and names in this script you would need to modify or specify your path anyway so this is no extra work compared to regular exporting method so let's see mesh names mesh names by default are given the ones which are generated by the windows hrtf mesh grading bat files so actually this already matches what we have so we don't need to change that export new folder names this is how the project is going to be called in this case you can leave the default ones or we can also say test some other name it doesn't matter if they are the same or different export path here it's already preset to the path i'm using in this tutorial so it's C mesh to HRDF tools. That's the folder I'm using. 
and the mesh to HRDF path right now is also set to the one I have I have in this tutorial. Let me open it quickly. Mesh to HRDF. So the mesh to HRDF path must be pointing to the folder which contains mesh to input, numcalc, and output folders. This is a path you want. So you copy your path and put it in here. In this case, it's the same. And the ears list must remain the way it is. Nothing to change. That's it. Now we do select all, control A, control C. And here we go to the scripting tab. And here is a window which is called Python console. And we can simply paste here this code. I've already pasted it. It in fact already started executing it. So when it looks like this, you can actually scroll up and see the whole code. Sometimes it throws an error already up there. And if you don't scroll up, you may not notice it. And it says now hit enter two times. Enter, enter. Trace back, something went wrong. So following the law of all demos, of course it didn't work. But uh, after some checking, I noticed that all you need to do is try again. So I copy the whole code again. And one important thing is if the project folders are already created, they have to be deleted before you try to export again. So let's do exactly the same thing again. Two times enter. And it works. What happens is it creates a few backup files and it outputted all the folders we want. So I have these wacky names, some other name. That's one project. And here is my other project. So they contain the Blender files with the correct model. In the info file, you can see that uh, these projects are going to use these evaluation grids. They are configured to run in 150 hertz frequency steps up to 24,000 hertz, which means that they will generate both 48 kilohertz and 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate HRTF HRIR files. So everything is fine. And uh, just for demonstration purposes, let's do the same thing again. And I hit enter. And you don't see anything happening. Why? If you scroll up, it actually shows you that there's an error. And it says that project folder already exists. Choose another folder or delete files. So that's an example of one of the checks giving you an error and stopping you from continuing exporting but you need to scroll up to actually see it. Now I will show you how to do the same thing manually. So if we go back to the tutorial, you can see the regular method. Regular method says just open the export menu, put in the settings you need and uh, export. So that's exactly what we can do. Except to do this, you need to first rename or copy one of your meshes to have it named reference. The script does it for you, but if you don't use a script, you have to do it manually. So in this case, we have this already named reference because it's left after the running the automated script. And we go into mesh to HRTF. Here, the important part is the path. The path needs to be set correctly to not here to a folder, as I mentioned before. Even if you afterwards going to simulate it in Linux or Mac, which you can always do, you have to put in your path to the folder as it is when you exporting on this computer. Pictures, I'm going to deselect. References and compute HRRs are necessary. And again, everything I do is written here, project export settings. So here is an example screenshot. 
And here's a table providing information about which settings you should specify. Everything which you see here is already entered into this code. And here you can see the same settings only provided as Python code to execute in Blender as a script. So in practice, we need to change the minimum frequency to zero. Maximum frequency, we want 24,000 in almost all cases. And a step size, you probably would like to have 150 or if you want to double the precision to 75. Again, you can do custom simulations if you want, but this is something which will work for you. So we are going to save this into tools folder and we write some kind of test regular export. I suggest to not use spaces and press export. What does it say? Something is wrong. Okay, we have some kind of error. Let's check what we can do about it. Default. Actually, we can also add Audi as one of the evaluation grids. And you can see what I'm specifying here is the name of one of these folders. There's a folder called default. Here it is. There's a called Audi and you can add, for example, this folder as well. Right, so what I made a mistake about, I didn't specify the correct ear. And this one is the right side, so I need to specify a right ear. And that's exactly why I would suggest to use the scripted express method, because that one prevents you from doing such mistakes as I ju just did. Right ear, we press export, and we get a, another error again. Right, because the folder already exists. So I need to go back to my mesh to HRTF tools. You see, I already exported once, so it created a folder. Test regular export. Yes. So I delete it. And now if I do the same thing, literally exactly the same thing, press export, I get no errors. And if I go to my tools folder, I see this is the regular export project, which I just created. In the info, I have three evaluation grids specified, not just two. And uh, in principle, you can just run it. So because I have one too many, I will delete this one and leave the two folders for left and right, which I created previously. Perhaps I should make the name a little bit less confusing. It actually works either way. And if you would do the manual work, then now you would need to rename this to something else and take the left side. You unhide the left side and now you need to rename this one to reference. And do the exporting again. So you go to export mesh to HRTF. And this time you need to specify the correct ear again manually. The rest of the settings you should leave the same. And press export except into a different folder. So we go export. Now I actually did the regular export correctly manually. And now I have the second folder test regular export L created as well. I delete that. So this actually is it. Now we do have projects exported. We don't need Blender anymore. We can close it. And uh, the next step will be to run NomCalc Manager. And I'll show you how to execute it and some other details in the next video. Thank you.